Uh, my name is Eric Deakins. I was a Labour Member of Parliament from 1970 to 1987. And during that period, and both before it and after it, I have played a prominent part, or tried to, in the campaign to convince the British people that entry uh, into and membership of what is now the European Union has never been in the national interest. The process began in 1957 with the Treaty of Rome, signed by six West European countries which had tried to unite after the war in an iron and steel community, and it determined that that process of unification, economic unification, should be taken further. Uh, the founders of the community, the philosophers behind it, were quite clear about their ultimate objectives. Jean Monnet, one of the principal authors of the Treaty of Rome, told Douglas Jay, a British cabinet minister in the 60s and again in the 70s under Harold Wilson, that uh, at the time, in 1957, they had taken a conscious decision not to set out their ultimate objectives for unification in Western Europe. They had decided that uh, the people in each country would not support such an idea and therefore they decided on a process whereby they would start with forms of economic integration which would eventually lead to a form of economic union and that would develop into forms of political integration over all areas of uh, activity and the economy and that would develop eventually into a political union. So there were four stages of which the Treaty of Rome was just the first and perhaps the most important. They argued solely for economic integration. Britain did not join at that stage but subsequently as the British economy seemed to deteriorate and Britain's influence in the world particularly after the Suez crisis of 1956 began to wane. They felt that there was a role for Britain in joining the common market as it then was uh, in order to get economic advantage and perhaps political advantage as well. In 1963 the United Kingdom Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, a Conservative, decided that it was time to apply uh, for entry negotiations into the common market uh, and he decided that uh, there was no, to be no opposition he thought the British people would take his word for it. The Anti-Common Market League consisting of people like myself was formed in 1961, because by 1961 it was quite clear that Harold Macmillan wanted Britain to join the common market. In March 1961, at the inaugural meeting of the uh, Anti-Common Market League, uh, in Central Hall, Westminster, with the world's television there, because this was a momentous occasion, uh, there were two Conservative MPs speaking, both Knights of the Shire, and I was there as the sole Labour, hardly representative perhaps, uh, but certainly the only Labour person there, because I had been prospective and actual candidate against Margaret Thatcher in 1959 when she first was elected to Parliament. So the three of us spoke, and there was great interest in what we'd said, and I remember distinctly a report in the Times in March 1961 which said that Mr Deakins had said that if this all went ahead, it would make the struggle over German rearmament in the labour movement, which had occupied a number of the previous years, very controversial, uh, make seem like a storm in a teacup. And that was a quote in the Times. Nothing much happened after that because um, uh, Labour still hadn't made up its mind and uh, the Liberals, I think, were fairly in favour, that is the Liberal Party at the time. In 1967, when the process of uh, entry negotiations had been taken up by Harold Wilson, 
as a Labour Prime Minister, thinking it was time that Britain joined the common market, I was the Labour candidate in a notorious by-election in Walthamstow, in fact West Walthamstow in North East London, uh, which I lost by 62 votes in a small constituency, which had been solid Labour, one of the few Labour seats which had remained Labour even in the debacle of 1931 a seat that Attlee himself had held uh, for a considerable time before retirement. At, in that campaign, I was restrained because my views anti-common market were well known, but I couldn't put them into the election address, which was written for me as all by-election uh, election addresses are done, particularly when it's a government seat at stake. And so I lost and 500 votes went to an anti-common market candidate, which would otherwise, I'm sure, have come to me. However, that is uh, just a personal thought, and that was just one of those things one has to accept. In 1970, I was elected MP in the same constituency. Uh, the Tory, Edward Heath, had won the election, became Prime Minister, and immediately started building on uh, Harold Wilson's negotiations, which had been brought to a halt by um, General de Gaulle saying he didn't want Britain in the common market. But a new president in France, Monsieur Pompidou, had made it clear that given the right entry terms he would probably agree, and so Ted Heath went ahead. Um, the uh, House of Commons and the PL Parliamentary Labour Party held a series of meetings, very important meetings, on aspects of common market entry in which all the top people spoke, both for and against. I played some part in those debates because I was, uh, uh, strangely enough for the Labour Party, an expert on agricultural matters, having spent 15 years working in agricultural marketing before getting into the House. Uh, speaking against people like Roy Jenkins and Shirley Williams and others, shoot, trying to shoot down their arguments. However, the PLP was very split about the matter, and um, although uh, there was strong opposition, we couldn't stop Ted Heath introducing the European Communities Bill in 1971 to allow us to enter. As a backbencher, I was added to the Labour front bench team. I'd only been in the House about a year that were fighting the bill. The first day of the bill's committee stage was held up by over eight hours of points of order, an absolute parliamentary record. Um, and I was there the whole time, although I didn't actually feel the need myself to get up and raise a point of order. Because the chairman of Ways and Means, which was going to guide the bill through the House at its committee stage, had ruled against the idea of amendments on major points of principle. Eventually, uh, matters proceeded and we had a situation in which a minority of the Parliamentary Labour Party and a minority of the Parliamentary Conservative Party consistently voted against their party's line. The Labour line was to oppose the bill because it was a Ted Heath bill. The Tory line was naturally to support the government bill, but there were people on both sides on the back benches, including a few ex-ministers on both sides, who strongly objected to the principle taken by the position taken by their own party. Sadly, there were more Labour rebels than there were Conservative rebels, and of course Ted Heath had a majority of around about 40. 